Um, Sanjay Gupta interviewed Vice President Dick Cheney and had this conversation with him. In 2007, when Cheney needed his implanted defibrillator replaced, Dr. Reiner ordered the manufacturer to disable the wireless feature, fearing a terrorist could assassinate the vice president by sending a signal to the device telling it to shock his heart into cardiac arrest. And it seemed to me to be a bad idea for the vice president of the United States to have a device that maybe somebody on a rope line or someone in the next hotel room or downstairs might be able to get into, hack into, and I worried that someone could kill you. It might sound far-fetched, but years later, this scene from the Showtime drama Homeland showed just how it could be done to the fictional vice president. I'm killing you. What did you think when you watched that? Well, um, I was aware of the, the, the danger, if you will, that existed. Um, but I found it credible because I, I knew from the, the experience we'd had and the necessity for adjusting my own device that uh, it was a, an accurate portrayal of what was possible. That is from 60 Minutes Sunday night. So we decided to go to the experts to find out just what is real and what isn't real. Dr. Michael Lim is with us. He's a cardiology director at St. Louis University Hospital. Doctor, thank you for joining us on a Tuesday morning. Good morning. Uh, how possible is it to hack into one's defibrillator? Well, let's talk about the defibrillator or the pacemakers. They have a, an ability, uh, which is one that's made out of convenience and uh, uh, increased ability to take care of patients, where we can, uh, with the right equipment, uh, which the companies provide, uh, be able to tell what's going on in somebody's heart with respect to their the function of the device or the functioning of the leads uh, when we're not with the patient. So this is what we call a remote interrogation. Uh, that information is, is what I just said, is information only. Uh, so we gain the information with respect to the heart rhythm that the patient is in and how the device is functioning. What uh, they were talking about on 60 Minutes is potentially changing the program or the functioning of the device. And the device manufacturers uh, have uh, worked very hard to make sure that you cannot change the programming of the device remotely. You actually have to be in physical contact with the patient to be able to change how that device works. So as far as we understand it, what they were talking about can't happen. Okay, but but th there has to be a way for the monitor in my body to then have a GPS system or some Wi-Fi capability to sort of send that information back to you, right? Yeah, so it's there, there's no GPS. There is a RF signal, uh, which is a, a different way of transmitting information wirelessly. Uh, to a, uh, a box which we provide for patients in their home uh, so that when we, can, when we put in one of these devices, we check it every three months. So we either have to have them come in to see us in the hospital or in our offices every three months, or we can, ha we can have them do it at home uh, remotely. And obviously doing it from home remotely is uh, far more convenient. When, when you heard that Dick Cheney's doctor uh, disabled this feature because he was afraid somebody might hack into it and 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 do something terrible. Were you were you surprised by that? Uh, you know the the I'm not surprised because the 60 Minutes interview followed that episode of Homeland that uh, surfaced these questions. Uh, I am not also surprised because uh, if we remember during the time when uh, Vice President Cheney was in. Uh, I think we believed anything possibly could happen in this country. Uh, and so uh, being very conservative or, or being uh, ultra-cautious, I'm not sure, was uh, um, not any different than how we were doing everything else. Yeah. So you're saying that the only way to hack into one of these devices is to physically take that device and then sort of work your will once you have the device. You can't do it r remotely. You cannot. You have to do it when you're with the patient with a programmer. The programmer is basically a computer and uh, a, a connection 
piece that goes with the device. You cannot do it remotely. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. RF um, is a form of a radio frequency, is it not? That's correct. Yeah. Uh, and, and I'm not joking here, but what's if somebody, you know, turns on a car w- with their key fob or actually opens up their garage door? That's a radio signal. Does that interfere with it at all? So there's a lot of different radio signals. The companies have worked very hard to make sure that these radio signals that are used to transmit information back and forth the device are of a wavelength that do not cross-match with uh, almost all everyday uh, radio signals or other wireless signals, because obviously we live in a wireless community now. Right. Uh, what's the future of all this, Dr. Michael Lim? So, you know, I don't think that people should uh, worry with respect to if they have def- defibrillators or pacemakers. Uh, uh, you know, the, the, the security of their devices is sound. The, if the rationale for putting the device in uh, was good, then they should enjoy the benefits of that, and they should work with their doctors to make sure those devices stay checked and in good working order. When this aired Sunday night on 60 Minutes, um, did you get any phone calls from from patients asking them about this? Uh, I have not gotten a patient phone call yet, no. All right, so just the crazy people on the radio who want to know something (laughs) like, like this. Well, I think we've talked to uh, different media outlets to uh, reassure folks the way we're doing with with you and and your listeners, Uh, again, to make sure that people understand that the the safety and security and all the good things that these devices provide them are still just as valid today as they were Friday before 60 Minutes aired. Dr. Michael Lim, cardiology director at St. Louis University Hospital. Doctor, thank you for your insight, and uh, have a good day. All right. You have a great day, too. 727 here on the Big 550 KTRS. Well, that's good to know, right? That is good to know. But, oh, you know, when when you put information out there like that, there's always someone who's trying to work ahead. Right. And now that it's out there, going to try to hack into but, but imagine, the program. And- imagine being Dick Cheney and your doctor says, I'm going to di- disable this feature because Lord knows what, God, God forbid, something were to happen. Then you're watching Homeland three years later, and the the the, the terrorist is killing the vice president through the I same. I'm killing you now. <laughs> through, through the same device they d- disabled on you yes. because they were afraid that might happen to you. I know. You know what though? He has nerves of steel. I love Dick Dick Cheney. Yeah. I love Dick Cheney. He's the best. He's there's no there's no gray area with Dick Cheney. You ask him a question, he'll answer it. Very straightforward. Yeah. Uh, we're just going to go in and we're going to uh, drop the bombs and uh, we're going to kill everybody. <laughs> Next question. <laughs> it's just, he's the best. 728, Big 550, KTR.